So this is a transformative deal, I think, for the industry because it's the first time at scale we produce methane, LNG, from renewable green hydrogen. So this is a, the first of a series of projects that will help transition from fossil energy to renewable energy. In terms of satisfying immediate shortage in Europe, we're only talking about one to 200,000 tons in a you know, 300 million ton market. So it's not gonna itself change the balance of energy, but it's really significant because it's about using renewable energy into the existing natural gas infrastructure. Many discussions about the role of the Inflation Reduction Act that key investment is going towards the United States because of the subsidies, tax advantages offered. What would you say about the role that the IRA has played in this decision today to invest in the United States? So let's be clear. Uh, it makes sense to produce renewable energy where it's very sunny and windy. And so Europe doesn't have, with the exception of Iberia, a lot of those regions. So we would anyway go to look at Texas, the Middle East, Australia, some of the world's cheapest renewable energy resources. So the U.S. is not taking investment away from Europe. It may be taking investment away from Australia or from the Middle East or from North Africa because uh, Texas has some of the best uh, renewable energy. What the IRA does, it's accelerating everything by a couple of years, and it's uh, making the U.S. more attractive than other sunny and windy places. But it's also helping Europe get cheaper energy because with the subsidies, we can import this e NG, electric natural gas, at the same cost as we import fossil natural gas. So it really helps accelerate the adoption of this new molecule. Marco, let me channel my inner Jesse J here. It's all about the money, money, money. And that's the problem, isn't it? Because we know that the costs at the moment of hydrogen produ production just don't add up when it comes to this fuel source. And yet everybody wants it to work because it looks so attractive as a transition solution away from oil and gas that we currently use. How much is this process you're talking about going to reduce the headline production cost and how much more attractive will that make it as a technology proposition? So the cost is always a function of how much it costs to produce and then how much it costs to move it from where you produce it in a sunny and windy places to where you use it. Our product solves the latter. So once you have it produced, it's a drop-in immediate solution because it's chemically indistinguishable, identical to fossil gas. So you save all the downstream capex and you save this chicken and egg dilemma of do I build a supply first, do I build a demand first? We're selling into a very large market that already exists. So let's say 80% of the problem is solved with our product. Now we need to solve the cost problem, which is about reducing the cost of the electrolyzer, which is the machine that turns water and solar energy into hydrogen. The same way we reduce the cost of solar and wind energy to levels that are below fossil fuels, we will lower the cost of these electrolyzers as we scale up production. So I've written four books on the topic. I'm convinced, as many others, and a lot of the scientific community, we can this decade make green hydrogen cheaper than fossil fuels in many parts of the world.